welcome to District 86 Toastmasters radio show. Meet with fellow Toastmasters, learn secrets of public speaking and tips of leadership. We broadcast from Ontario, Canada. Follow us online at www.toastmasters86.org. Good evening, fellow Toastmasters of District 86, and welcome guests. My name is Vitaly Fursov. I am District 86 Public Relations Officer. Tonight, we are all here at the PRO Corner conference call, and today we have a very special guest on our call, distinguished Toastmaster Mark McKenzie. And let me tell you just a few words about Mark. In 2013, Mark began a very interesting project, which he handled as his uh, high-performance leadership profile project. And what was done, my, uh, Mark collected over 2,000 2, pounds of non-perishable food items for the Salvation Army of Brampton. And he organized over a dozen of Toastmasters clubs to help him to do this job. Today, Mark is on the call because he has something to share about his last year project, and also he has to talk to us about his this year HPL project. So welcome, Mark. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Toastmaster Vitaly. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, I hope you're all having a wonderful time. But, you know, for me, I'm, I'm truly, truly very excited to be participating in this call to share, you know, some of my experiences with my high-performance leadership project that I did last year and the results as well, as well as um, the plans that I have for a similar project this year and also to attempt to help at least three Toastmasters get their HBL done. All right. So by way of a background, um, my home club is City Center Toastmasters Club. Um, we are truly uh, innovative in terms of how we present the Toastmasters program, both the educational program and leadership uh, um, component. Um, we, we at City Center, we truly believe that within the Toastmasters program, there's really uh, no failure. And because of that, we open ourselves up in terms of how we take risk. And it was really that platform that gave me the courage to do my high-performance leadership project and take it outside of the realms of Toastmasters. Um, the HPL has... Uh, most Toastmasters may know, and it's, um, it's not widely publicized. The HPL is perhaps one of the, the, the best projects in my mind within the Toastmasters program. And what it is, is it's really the highlight of both your, the communication skills and the leadership skills that you have honed over your period of time within the Toastmasters program. And it really called you to First and foremost, analyze what is your, what kind of leader you are, what's your leadership style, and that kind of stuff. Within the HPL program, there are five components which involve, for example, um, establish a, a vision, establishing objectives. I mean, so it, it really drives down to what any corporate leader or any leading government or in a non profitable organization you need to be as a leader. You know, you have to set clear mission, have clear vision, you have to develop a, a, a clear goals and then put those goals into actionable components. So they, they, they I I'm truly excited by the HPL program uh, project, sorry, and I'm trying to encourage more Toastmasters you know, as they advance in the Toastmasters program to get their HPL done, because I, I think that is really where you get to truly put to test all that you, all the skills and all that you have learned during your time in Toastmasters, because it embraced both communication and leadership. So for my project last year, I decided I would do a food drive for the Salvation Army of Brampton. Uh, the first task was to for me to 
obviously identify my what we call the guidance committee, which is they're like your evaluators, they are like your advisors. So once you decide to do your HPL, you're going to need to have a guidance committee. I had three people, which is uh, what is required in the manual, but you can have more more, more, more um, members as your guidance committee member. They don't all have to be Toastmasters members, all right? Uh, who, who was your uh, committee, Mark? Uh, my committee, uh, thank you, Vital, because I was just going to ask if I was going too fast. <laughs> thank you very <laughs> much. All right, my, my committee was uh, Shalini. Uh, she's a member of my club. Bent, he's also a member of my club. And Cora, who was also a member of my club. Shalini is a distinguished Toastmaster and a longtime member of uh, City Center Toastmasters Club. She perhaps has been involved for about 15 years. Bent is perhaps a Toastmaster for about 10, 15 years. I don't know how long, but you know, but they're they're truly good and strong, strong leaders. You know, people who I respect. And, and, and if you don't mind, how in particular, um, how in particular, your committee helped you with your project? Well, which is one of the points I was going to come to. All right. So when I conceptualize the project to do a food drive, all right. One of the first um, responses that I got from a Toastmaster was that, oh, the Toastmasters is not a, a charitable organization, so we have to be careful how we go outside of Toastmasters and, and that kind of stuff, all right? That's right. Then, but in fact, in, in fact, as I understand, Toastmasters helped you to become a leader, and now it is your turn to go to the community and help community to achieve something as well, applying your leadership skills and communication skills. Uh, precisely, precisely, because you know what Toast, in my mind, what Toastmasters is, it is equipping you with a tool. It's like uh, if you're a plumber, you will need to have, um, uh, say, a wrench and all that kind of stuff. Well, this is it. You know, whatever sphere of life you're in, then you need to have communication skills and some leadership skills. So you're getting the tools within Toastmasters. Now, what you, how, a, a plumber cannot go to a job without his tool, right? So if we're thinking about our communities, which in my case, which I'm, you know, I'm truly dedicated to, then I need to take those skills that I've developed in Toastmaster to have an uh, an impact on my community, and that's how I viewed my high performance leadership project. So I was making the point that someone was saying that um, a food drive, for example, I should be careful. But then I I went to Carolyn uh, Hoxie at the time, and she said it's fine. And I my one of my advisors, Shalini, had also attempted a food drive before, but she hadn't had. Um, as much success, so she just said, you know, I should be careful in terms of how I scope the project out. So it was good to first and foremost have someone like Shalini on my guidance committee, who she had some idea in terms of um, executing a full drive, you know, and um, so that was good. Um, in terms of uh, someone like Bent, he was able to guide me in terms of how I promote how I um, get uh, other clubs because I, I went outside of my club to get participation. So so he was very useful in terms of how I promoted the the, the food drive amongst Toastmasters Club. All right? So you, you, once you have decided to do your HPL, your guidance committee is going to be key because every step of the way you have to be reporting to your guidance committee and getting feedback and you also have to do presentation to your club as well. Okay. This is great. And uh, how, for how long have you have you prepared this project last year? How long did it take you to uh, to to prepare to plan the project and then to actually implement it? Uh what were the steps? Okay, well, if if I be truthful, I would say I started in April um last year. But if I tell you where I actually um, taken actionable steps, then it would have been it would have been about August um, 2013, and and that was when I actually formalized having the guidance committee in place, and then I established a date as to when the 
when the food drive collection is going to is going to start i had to do one of the first presentation that i had to do to my club was you know to to explain to them the first exercise within the hpl manual and where i fell on the um leadership scale i think i was something like a 4 or 4.5 or something like that um which mean which meant that i have a whole lot of leadership skills still to develop so essentially what it means is that even though I'm today a distinguished Toastmaster, there's still a lot to learn. Simple. Yep. So wonderful. And uh, that was CT Toastmasters uh, last year. And this year, once again, this will be driven by CT Center Toastmasters Club. And in fact, for general public, you uh, public general public can also participate, as I understand. Right. All they need to do just to uh, to contact you or contact Mississauga Central Library. Is that yeah, correct? Well, okay, that's 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 correct. And let, let me. So now I'm, you know, having um, done the project last year, I learned uh, there, there are things that I learned along the way, and so I've decided. Well, okay, I had a fair degree of success in doing the project, so I'm going to see now how can I start to refine it and how can I even help other Toastmasters to get their HPL done? So the plan this year is uh, we're going to launch, uh, officially launch the full drive on October 14. Uh, the way it is structured this year is that I'll have an additional team and, and these teams will be really sub project and the first team that I'm where we're conceptualizing and we're still looking for some very highly enthusiastic and motivated Toastmasters to lead this team. The first team is what I call a PR and communication. And essentially what that team will do is just to help me uh create the PR and the communications around the the food drive. Uh, last year, I had people who helped me with um, doing press releases and that kind of stuff. So it was really, I was really getting into a very, a, a kind of a sophisticated level. But this year, I said, okay, well, we need to get someone to to fully lead that team. All right, I didn't have anyone helping me um, have a team for logistics and collections last year. So this year, I'm saying we, I need to have. Uh, logistics collection and inventory management team and the reason being is that last year what i found out for example i got um a lot of support from two clubs from president from president choice that's um chosen voices and point of tail toast masters club i got a tremendous support from those two clubs as well as from the company and there we had about uh about 1000 plus pounds of non-perishable food item, and I turned up with my car, and um, I had a gentleman there who was a Toastmaster of um, France, and just the two of us load the stuff in my car, and then I drove to the Salvation Army. Now, we are aiming to have a much larger collection this year, so obviously, I will need more help to do with the collection and, you know, keeping track of what we have collected, because I never kept track of, okay, I had... 20 boxes of macaroni and cheese I had XML. I, I you know so I'm you know just just doing it and uh so uh, if if you don't mind uh, let let me jump in actually uh, logistics collection and inventory management this is your second biggest challenge that's your yes. uh, second team right yes, in addition yes. to your PR and communication team and yes. this year I am actually I am excited that uh, PR this year will will be definitely outstanding for your for your project what will happen tomorrow uh, this phone call uh, with with the article which you provided, with some pictures which you provided as well, will go to District 86 blog, yes. and then and then that particular page, the blog article, will be populated everywhere possible in all District 86 channels. So you will see yourself on YouTube, on Facebook, in Twitter. So that will be whole nine yards. And um, to talking about uh, talking about logistics collection and inventory management, I'm just wondering, 2,000 pounds of non-perishable perishable food items, 
how how many uh, uh, how big is the load? How how big is the load? Well, well I could tell you, uh, Vitaly, is that um, I was the one primarily doing the drop off at the Salvation Army of Brampton, right? And I can tell you, I did. Um, I think we. I started in the collection in. Um, I think it was on Remembrance Day in mid-November, twenty um, thirteen, and I between that date and the cutoff date for the project, I made about four or five trips to the mm-hmm. Salvation Army of Brampton. The largest deposit at any one time was one thousand two hundred pounds, and at varying time it was like three hundred three hundred pounds. Uh, you know, 150 pounds, and then, you know, and eventually, because what you do when you drop the stuff off, the the recipient weighs the, the boxes. They don't check to see, you know, macaroni. They don't, they don't check that. They, you know, at that time, they just weigh it, all right? So I got the weight each time, and then I recorded it, and, you know, it, so it, it's, this this time around, I'm hoping to have, someone else helping with the logistics, you know, because like if I get more than twelve clubs participating this 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 time around, I'm I'm also gonna need more people to help to go around to the club. And the the, the other thing I could add, I know I'm going a bit fast, um because I don't know how much time I have. But 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 the other thing I would add is with the food drive, I also had a lot of invitations to speak at other clubs. All right, and that's one of the reasons one of the other teams that I have this year is what I call event event planning and bookings. Because last year, for those clubs that asked me to turn up to speak on dates when I had other obligations, I had to find a speaker who who knew enough about the project I was doing and who would be able to go and represent the project. Mm-hmm. As well, so you know it, it's, it's. So he, here, he, here you definitely needed help from a speakers bureau, right? Oh well, there you go, there you <laughs> go, there you go, there you go. So what I'm saying is that we, it's. I, I think if there's any inspiration that can come from it, is that Absolutely. as Toastmasters, we are communicators and we are leaders, and we just have to. Just recognize that within the program, there's no failure. There's just no failure. And, um, you know, I'm willing to help two or three Toastmasters who are struggling to, oh, what should I do for my HBL? Well, here it is. I just have, these are just ideas, right? These are just mm-hmm. ideas. And, and Mark, tell us a little bit about yourself outside of Toastmasters. What do you do for a living? Okay, well, um, my background is uh, finance and economics, and um, by profession, I am what you call a financial sector regulator. And um, around 2006, I, I set up my own consulting practice, Mark McKenzie Consulting. So occasionally, I, I do assignments for agencies such as the International Monetary Fund, the World Bank, and occasionally I do, do work for the banks downtown and other financial institutions. Primarily in the in the area of anti money laundering and anti terrorist financing, um, I've worked in about across uh, uh, about twenty 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 odd countries now um, for various varying period. And you know, uh, this summer my assignment was in Trinidad and to Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, a couple of years ago, I spent um, spent some time in Croatia, Armenia, those places. So, you know, I, I get to see the world through different eyes and um it's probably one of the things that inspire me to do a project such as a food drive recognizing that i've had opportunities that so many others haven't had and if i can help yep. to... the, the, this is this is definitely very interesting very interesting you're a very interesting person you're a financial consultant and uh, you're a toastmaster who achieved dtm uh, in fact how many years you um, you are a toastmaster how many years did it take you to complete your dtm how many years okay uh okay just about 15 years right. 15 years a, toastmaster 15 years and there's a story behind it there's a there's a story behind it and um perhaps that's 
that was probably what gave me the courage to do the project, to really get over the hill to get the DTM. Uh, in uh, 2012, I had a project in Antigua and Barbuda in the Caribbean. And when I arrived there, there wasn't a Toastmasters club there. All right? And I checked around. I had worked previously in the British Virgin Islands, which is also in the Caribbean, and I had helped set a Toastmasters club up there. So I checked around in the Caribbean and said, well, there's a gentleman in Antigua and Barbuda who is quite interested in um, starting a Toastmasters club. So I was only going to be there for six months, and I, you know, so I, you know, I helped to set the club up there. And just around the same time, the club that I had helped in the British Virgin Islands was celebrating its 10th anniversary, and they invited me to be uh, uh, a guest speaker. Right. So I went, and it struck me at that moment that we, as as individuals, we we don't have to be the one who, say, for example, find the cure for cancer. Uh, we don't have to be, as individuals, the ones who find the solution to the environmental challenges. Right. But if we do small things, we do leave an impact, because here it is, a simple thing such as starting a Toastmasters club, that was now celebrating 10 years, I'm being recognized as one of the, the founding member, founding president, and it struck me then that as leaders, you know, as individuals, we just need to find that one little thing that we can have an impact, all right? So, for example... I, I needed to accomplish my DTM, and I did a project to collect food for the Salvation Army of Brampton. And here mm -hmm. I am now on the phone with a group of Toastmasters sharing that experience. All right? We, it, it's, it's, it's a simple, in, in my mind, and that, that was very instructive, it is simple. It is simple. Find where you can have an impact and do your little bit. And that's what I'm trying to do. Amazing, Mark. This is really amazing. Actually, I know many Toastmasters, they do uh, different sort of things for the HPL. They they pick a conference uh, or uh, they chair in a special event sometime or a contest in a club or in the area or even doing their role as area governor, as an HPL different things but rarely I hear when people doing things like you do doing projects for community and that's absolutely amazing this is in my opinion the best way to promote Toastmasters brand and the best way to truly understand what Toastmasters school have taught us and and also what I commend you for and this thought uh, I will definitely embrace it if we do small things we leave an impact so you are truly doing an impact. I'm not sure how small things it is that you are doing. Definitely not last year and definitely not this year. But this particular project is a big thing for community, for sure. Thank you for doing that. Oh, I'm, 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 I'm truly touched. And um, you know, I'm just hoping that, uh, you know, like, I don't have the, I don't have the complete idea, Vitaly. I just have a bit of the idea, and what I'm looking for is 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 others who can refine this idea, others who can together we can take it to where we want it to go you know I, you know so so it was my project last year, and this year my club is fully behind me in terms of you know it is it, it last year it was mark McKenzie high performance leadership project holiday season food drive. This year is City Center Toastmasters Club second annual food drive. You know, and and, 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 and and that's what it is. You know, it's you know, as long as we are having an impact, it doesn't matter if it's Mark doing it or Vitaly doing it or Toastmaster A or Toastmaster B. As long as we're having an impact together Amazing. we can we can achieve. All right, we have we have several people, several to Toastmasters on the phone call, and we have people from different areas uh, and from different districts even. Uh, so, guys, Toastmasters, if you have any questions uh, you would like to clarify while Mark is on the call, go ahead, uh, take a, take a microphone or unmute your microphone and uh, speak your question to Mark.
This is Ahava Patel from District 54. I don't really have a question, but I just wanted to commend you for organizing the call and also commend Mark for organizing such a great HPL project. I'm in the midst of organizing an HPL project myself, and it's not it's not based in community service the way yours is, but I think that's a fantastic idea, and I hope that's something my district, my club, and all Toastmasters can participate in more. I, I definitely think that's a tremendous idea. Thank you. Mark has provided an uh, amazing article about this project. You will find it at uh, www.toastmasters86.org. Just follow to the blog. And for more information, please contact uh, Mark McKenzie directly. Uh, Mark, can I provide your telephone number? Yes, certainly. Okay. Certainly. Uh, yeah, it is 647-406-4622. 647-406-4622. Local to Missis Mississauga or Brampton, uh, people can go to... Mississauga Central Library, or you can email Mark at Mark Y M M C K E N Z I E at Rogers dot com. So this is the information. You will find all these uh, details tomorrow at District eighty six blog. Mark, thank you so much for doing this project for now repeating this project actually thank you for your success last year thank you for recognition of that success and for your decision this year not just to repeat this success this year you're duplicating it you're triplicating it you you invited three toastmasters to repeat your success from last year so this project will grow and i'm sure knowing people in our community i'm sure this project will continue year from year from uh, to year. So this is amazing, amazing tradition you have started in uh, Brampton and Mississauga community. Thank you for that. Thank you very much. Yeah. yeah, if no more questions, I invite everybody to join our next call, which will happen on Monday, October 13th, 2014 at 8 p.m. You can find us at join.me slash Toastmasters 86 PRO. Once again, you could join us online at join.me forward slash Toastmasters 86 PRO. Or you could dial in, and the number for dialing in is 647 977 2648. 647 977 2648. And the conference ID is 137-954-637. All information is on District 86 blog and, and on District 86 PRO page. You could find our website at www.toastmasters86.org. It was Vitaly Fursov, District 86 PRO. Thank you for joining our call. Have a wonderful evening. And we'll hear you next week.